Welcome to the NXT Podcast, your home for weekly NXT reviews and insight. The beautiful part of NXT is that when one dream ends, another dream begins. Find all of your NXT news, recaps, and analysis right here. So with that being said, we only have one question for you. Are you ready? We thought so. Let's get the show started right now. All right, everyone. This is Memphis Mark coming to you from Mullet Manor. And we're going to do the review for New Year's Evil. That's right, for NXT. And uh, they come out of the gate with a couple of uh, ladies going at it in Blair Davenport and Lyra Vakira. And a good, solid match. Um, you know, both of the ladies are strong. Their timing's good. Um, Blair has a monster double stomp off the top rope in this. It looks like that almost ended it. Uh, Lyra's going to come out with some great moves, but she moves when Blair goes to uh, hit her with a big knee, and the knee hits the desk, and that is the start of her demise, <laughs> because uh, she can never really carry on. Lyra ends up uh, uh, catching her when she is uh, having another knee problem, and ends up with a big move off the top rope, and wins the match. And um, so you're thinking, hey, it should be, let's see what the next match is. But no, uh, Lola Vice shows up with her contract and tries to cash it in. And uh, out of nowhere, you got Tatum Paxley, uh, <laughs> scary Tatum there, uh, jumping off and jumping in the match or jumping in the uh, uh, Lola trying to get into the match and uh, yeah Electra shows up and there you got a little brouhaha on the outside but uh, yeah ends up Lyra wins the match uh, then they come out and announce that Dragunov uh, <laughs> is not medically cleared so they had a big match with Trick Williams coming up and then Dragunov and so no match uh, so, yeah, that's uh, big news. And then they go into the no quarter catch crew uh, in a six man tag with LWO and Carlito. Not Dragon Lee, but Carlito. And, uh, you know, Carlito, when he burst on the scene years ago with the Apple and the whole deal, yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, I just don't think maybe him being, I believe, a second or a third generation wrestler. I just don't think it was uh, as fun for him as it was for a lot of other people that enjoyed him. But he is back. A little slower, but a lot uh, thicker, uh, better shape. Uh, and so a good match. Um, I said that Dempsey's over in uh, Japan doing something. And uh, so, you know, you got born, uh, uh, yeah, born a Kemp and uh, Gulak. And um, the match is good, but I got to say, that the uh, LWO gets on the ropes, Carlito uh, on one side and one of the gentlemen on the other, and they springboard or catapult one of the LWO members, and it looks freaking great. Uh, he flies through the air, takes them out. Uh, you know, they're going to end up winning the match, but that particular move was just, uh, it's worth going back and checking that out. Uh, Carlito does get a chance to, to get the apple and uh, spit it in Gulak's face, so you got a little something, something there. Uh, they go from there, and they've got uh, Mellow and Trick uh, doing a little promo, and of course, Grayson Wola <laughs> shows up and kind of puts himself in, an, in a match with Trick, and well, then uh, Mello uh, does one of those little eyeball things again where he just decides to put Trick's title shot up in this match. And, of course, Jason, or uh, Grayson, uh, jumps all over it. And uh, so that's going to be the, uh, the last match. But Trick uh, looks a little perturbed at Mello for that. Uh, all right, where <laughs> we go from that? We got Ariana Grace and Roxanne going at it and uh they've done a slow build on this um 
you know, and it's it's pretty good. Uh, Ariana is actually pretty good in the ring. Facial expressions good. Um, good start for this young lady. Uh, Roxanne, you know about her abilities, uh, but so uh, a pretty good match. And then uh, uh, Roxanne is going to end up winning this match, but um, she gets after the match. She jumps on Miss Grace again and puts like a cross face on her, but she won't relinquish the hold, which causes the refs to reverse the decision and give the decision to Miss Grace. So I can see where they're going to go with that. Uh, it should be pretty interesting to see how they um, portray that next week. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, then they, they've got our new management representation for uh, HBK, uh, Ava. And uh, she comes out and, and kind of explains what she's doing there. Uh, that uh, HBK, the brand's growing and HBK needs help. So <laughs> that's... I guess where they're going to go with that one. I guess that's just the way it is. Uh, then they do a little recap of the Tiffany um, Valen angle and uh, pretty much go back to Halloween where Valen came out dressed like Tiff Tiff. <laughs> and that's where the kind of the whole thing started there uh, but leading up to it. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, you've got uh, Blair Davenport kind of walking through the back, still hurt from the Pop Rocks. Uh, that got put on her in the match. Um, and so, out of nowhere, Nikita Lyons shows up and lets her know that she could have dropped her right then, like they had done her earlier in the year. But she respected her, and so they have a little run-in, so that is going to be another angle they're coming up with uh, next week. Uh, but from there... You are going to have the match between Tiffany Stratton and Valen Henry. And it's a loser becomes the other servant. So, Valen losing, she becomes a servant. If uh, Tiff loses, then she becomes a, uh, a ranch hand. <laughs> cleaning out the stalls. The blonde hair, the whole thing, cleaning out stalls. Jeez, that's never been done before, but <laughs> it should be pretty interesting and comical coming up uh but the match itself um it's a pretty good match uh valen's been getting better and better uh tiffany of course is is very good uh so it looks um you know it looks uh everything looks great but the her timing was good everything looks uh, uh looks good and in the match tiffany brings a chair in and they've they've I've seen this angle of course several times, but it's the same old. You bring a chair in, uh, it ends up costing you the match, not by disqualification, but by some stupidity or little move you make wrong. And bam, that's exactly what happens here. And uh, so Valen ends up getting the pin. So we will be seeing those promos <laughs> coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure. Uh, out there at the farm cleaning out the stalls so we'll see how that <laughs> goes but uh yeah match pretty good uh you know uh, i'm still uh, kind of amazed by the the flipping the guy off the ropes there the cattle pulting earlier too so uh anyway they go into another little promo that's uh pretty much baron corbin and uh and braun and baron goes to braun and presents him with the fact that uh, earlier in the night Ava had mentioned that they were getting ready to start the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Tournament. So, uh, you know, Baron comes to him and says, hey, the, we, we team, we win. And uh, they have their little comical standoff, but they both end up agreeing that, uh, hey, might not be a bad deal. Uh, not, not a bad deal at all, I guess. So that would be a good tag team, though. Uh, we'll see how it works, though, coming up in the future. And then they uh, they do a little spot with Oba Finney and uh, the new uh, gentleman with, in the breakout tournament. And he apparently is from Nigeria. And they show a couple little spots of the like the the metropolis there, the, the largest area there in, in Nigeria. And so he's the king of there, and he's going to come over here. And if he wins, he'll be the king of NXT 
hey, 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 we will see. Uh, but yeah, they, you know, pretty good little spot there. They uh, then they've got a, a little cut in to the ladies' locker room, and uh, just so happens, Gigi is blocking Cora Jade's locker, uh, the whole locker thing from the last couple weeks. So, uh, yeah, that is setting up an angle with them on down the road because Cora and Gigi get in it over that. Uh, yeah, and then we got a quick little promo with Ridge Holland. And, uh, you know, they kind of go over his history, you know, uh, uh, and, and how he has a tendency uh, with injury, injuries. Uh, they show his, man, they show his knee and uh, his, his both legs. Um, I mean, he's his nose. Um, there ain't no uh, uh, makeup making some of those <laughs> some of those look like that. They looked uh, definitely they were for real. Uh, so yeah, he's just uh, saying that he's not a monster. Uh, you know, he's just a father, a son, a brother, or whatever. And um, they're they're doing a slow build on him. Uh, so we'll see how that turns out. Uh, but then you go to. The breakout tournament finals. Uh, you got Oba Finley against uh, Riley Osborne, the uh, the young upstart, uh, the young British man that uh, Thea is so infatuated with. And uh, this match, Riley does really good because uh, he makes the match look legit. But this <laughs> Oba is just a monster man. He's big. So every time Riley does get a anything going, it just uh, it gets knocked down. <laughs> and Oba does a open hand slap on this young man's chest that is one of the loudest I've heard since the Big Show back in the early part of the Big Show. Uh, really, <laughs> he's just so strong, and he sells somewhat. You know, he does what he can. You know, uh, but he's just so freaking big and he ends up after a little flurry from Mr. Osborne he does end up getting caught Osborne does and gets a big power slam uh, for the win and gets the contract the power slam eh, okay um, you know I can see this guy just needs ring time though just needs ring time he's got the look the, uh, the persona the everything about him uh, just a little little ring time, a little seasoning. Just a little seasoning, that's all that man needs. Uh, and then they do their little spot with uh, OTM, you know, out the mud. And uh, they let both these guys have the stick, and they both do good. You know, uh, one's generally doing most of the talking, but he does a fantastic job. Uh, they both look the parts, of course, uh, and they talk the talking. And walk the walk, as you would say. But what surprised me is I'm starting to like Reggie as a manager. Maybe that's what he needed to be all the time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he does a good little spot in this. And, it, you know, I can see him taking this somewhere. You know, because both these guys are so big, they just get uh, their seasoning in. And, uh, man, that could be dropped in a storyline just about just about anywhere in there uh, but good little spot there uh, they got a little promo with Izzy Dane and Kiana James and uh, you know uh, you want to be friends or do you want to make money and uh, she's pretty much explaining to everyone that Izzy Dane is money uh, so she is going to make that money uh, but you know okay spot um, Kiana always does good on the mic though and always in the ring and, and she's of the next one, I believe, she's ready to be called up. And that doggone good. Uh, but uh, right after that, you got Trick and Mellow in another little promo spot. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Trick's kind of letting him know, man, why did you put my title shot up? So uh, they, you know, Mellow does his way of explaining it. So they're on down the road. This is going to be... Uh, a problem on down the road so when the split up does happen it's going to be something like that uh, for sure uh, but yeah Trick does let him know that he wants to go out there by himself specifies by him 
self. Um, yeah, so, you know, well, that, that has to have some kind of angle in there, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, then uh, right after that, you got Chase U and, and the MVP out there with Athea and JC. And JC kind of announces that she is going to take over the lead role in Chase U. That she will bring it, reach down to the bottom and bring it from the depths all the way back to prominence. Uh, of course, Andre's a little wondering what the what the heck she's talking about and how they're going to do that. But, <laughs> and, you know, I could definitely see where they're going to go with that one there. Um, uh, you got, let me see, Lyra and then Paxley again being creepy. <laughs> a little spot about all I can say about that one. And then they've got old oh, poor old Nathan Frazier, because Axiom and Nathan uh, are talking, and you know that's how he's had his matches the last few weeks, because he'll get caught talking, uh, saying something about somebody else. Well, they decide that they're going to tag up for the Dusty Roads Tag Team Tournament, and uh, so it looks good. But uh, then he kind of uh, <laughs> kind of steps in it again. Uh, just seems kind of funny. He uh, he finds it really easy, but it's uh, Blade and Kofi, and and so yes, there there will be a match next week, and uh, but that should be good because Kofi and Blade, I love watching these guys, man. They are such when they say high flyers. I mean, like they're way up in the atmosphere flyers. So uh, should be a good match with those four. Uh, you got a little spot with Tony D and Stacks talking about now they've got a face out the mud uh, and everything, and they introduce their family member Andriana, um, and she's you know she's been in the storyline for the past several weeks, so they kind of introduce her, give her her coming out party, and right when they get to the car, they go to open the trunk, and there's Joe Gacy. <laughs> well, he kind of changed it around with old Joe Gacy. But he says he got rid of the body that was already in the trunk and he just needed a place to chill. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of interesting in itself. But, uh, yeah, they're making uh, Joe Gacy lovable and likable. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. But that's going to lead us up to... The Grayson Walla Trick Williams match, and they got the new T-shirts for uh, Trick out now, uh, and everything. So they're definitely doing the build with Trick, um, and this match itself is a, is a really good match. Um, you know, Trick can go, man, but Mister Walla, <laughs> Mister Walla can go himself. So uh, the match, they timed it out right. Oh, it, I, I really didn't see any mess-ups. I uh, said their timing's good. They've worked together before, though, but Waller is, you know, kind of heads and, uh, and shoulders above uh, because he's had that seasoning and had that time in the ring. Uh, so it's worked out really good for him. Uh, he's on that main roster getting some good spots. Uh, so... Wait, at one point he said he's he's fighting legends on uh, on the main roster and he ain't got time for no tricks. But uh, the match itself is good. Uh, and they had announced that an uh, ex-NXT champ would be showing up at the taping tonight. And uh, so uh, this match carries on for a while. Uh, uh, and then Mello runs out to do the distraction on Trick. Uh, so it's just wide open what they're doing with him. But then, out of nowhere, Kevin Owens shows up. And uh, KO comes in and catches uh, Walla outside and goes thumping upside his head, uh, sends him back into the ring. And uh, uh, Trick's able to uh, you know, end the match there. But uh, it, it was it wasn't so bad the way they did it. It just wasn't so good either. Um, it's just uh, it is what it is, folks. It is what it is. Uh, you know, in uh, some weeks you can do these reviews, and uh, it's hard for me to squeeze thirty minutes out of it. Uh, then some weeks, it's like today. Mm, you can 
kind of roll through it kind of quick. <laughs> so that's kind of the way this one was. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, the match itself pretty good. Uh, uh, and now they're going to have KO and Walla going at it, I'm sure, on SmackDown or, or something like that. And, and of course, Trick slowly trying to figure out what's up with that <laughs> when it comes to uh, Mellow Hill. Uh, so we'll we'll see where they're going to go with that. You know, it's kind of interesting. So there's a lot of different ways they can do it. So we will see how it looks uh, in a few weeks for sure. All right, well, uh, as far as the show goes, that is pretty much a uh, synopsis of the, of the whole show there. And, uh, uh, yeah, I kind of saved a little time, though, because I, I wanted to um, send a shout-out uh, to a, a wrestler that, um, that I kind of saw uh, coming up just about his whole career. Uh, and he's a, a great producer and uh, a coach now. Uh, for everyone, but it's uh, most people have heard of Dean Malenko, uh, the man of a thousand holds. Uh, never was great on the stick, but in the ring, just great. But he, you know, of course, was a little handicapped on the fact of his height, but he was just so good and sound technically. Uh, just uh, has always been fun to watch and great in tag teams and stuff like that. Um, but Mr. Malenko, or, or Dean Simon is his real name, um, it just went through DBS surgery. Um, and, and most folks are not going to know what DBS is, but it's deep brain st stimulation. It's a surgery uh, done for people with Parkinson's. And uh, Dean came out, ooh, I'm going to say about eight years ago, uh, maybe no, a little more than Ten, right around ten years ago, and announced that he had uh, Parkinson's. And um, uh, m most people don't know this, but uh, I was diagnosed about the same time. So uh, this uh, terrible disease affects people differently. Uh, it progresses and uh, in people differently. Uh, when you're younger, like uh, both of us, uh, it's uh, most people call it young onset Parkinson's, but it's a uh, either way it goes, it's a uh, debilitating, and uh, um, there's no cure. But uh, there is uh, life with it, and uh, uh, some people can can um, exercise and keep the diet right and do everything right. And, and like I said, it affects some people harder and stronger, and they it's hard for them to carry on their day to day activities. And uh, that's where the surgery comes in when you. Uh, get to position that you uh, can't carry on daily functions and stuff. You need the surgery. So anyway, uh, Dean went through that, and uh, I've heard he's been spotted around the AEW studios here in the last couple weeks. So uh, I just wanted to congratulate him on a on a successful surgery, and uh, glad to hear for him and his family's sake that he seems to be doing better. But uh, that's all I'm going to say on that one. Uh, and uh, guys, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules uh, to give us a listen uh, for a few minutes. And I hope uh, we did a decent job. Uh, but uh, other than that, guys, I'm going to let you get back to everything. So this is the first show of the new year. Sorry, I wasn't here last week. Uh, health things and, and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, guys. Uh, you you know how we always do it. You know, if you can, get out, help the shelters, do what you can. And, of course, spay and neuter. Uh, but this is Memphis Mark, and uh, I'm out. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to WWEPodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.